Uh, good morning. Uh, well, I'm a psychic this morning, huh? Um, welcome to the um, Open ID. Bring your own identity. Study group. It's 9.39 a.m. Um, March 4th, 2017. And uh, uh, none of the regular members of the study group uh, attended. Uh, Gary and I have been discussing uh, mostly our chain uh, program uh, working group and we added a couple of new assignments um, um, and I'm just finishing that up now um, but, uh, uh, we have the uh, web service running for our Slack integration of Rosette code. And you know, this in Rosette, it's prefix notation, plus six three is the way we add six and three. And with, on the web at dibbydow.org slash rosette.html, we run this and we get no response. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I got this morning. Uh, I'm not sure. You mentioned the fact that the, the braces in a preceding. I woke it up. How did you know how many to put in there? I just put in a bunch. <laughs> I put in enough. <laughs> well, you closed the last expression somewhere. Right. I'm thinking that maybe what I should do is always put an end parentheses or two before whatever somebody types. Now, the only thing here is I got the rosette prompt, which I didn't want. I'm not sure how I got that. Because uh, this is running on my laptop, even though I'm accessing it on the web. So anybody can expose a rosette running on a machine using the same technique. And they can collaboratively program the same running instance of a rosette virtual machine. Um, now, if I put the parentheses here now, do I still get the rosette? I do. Interesting that I get that rosette. Now I get nothing. Just try putting one parentheses. So it's for, for some reason it's losing a right parentheses somewhere. I'm not sure. It's it's clearly in a funny state. It doesn't make sense that it could lose a parentheses, and it certainly wasn't doing that before. Yeah, even when it wasn't losing parentheses, it didn't print Rosette up there. So something different is happening. Okay, so now that when it gets, sometimes it loses a print, sometimes it needs a parentheses, and sometimes it doesn't. And it seems like when it when it needs one, it won't work unless until you give it one, right? Yeah. <laughs> why it sometimes needs a parenthesis. Um, but um, if we look at our vagrant terminal, oh, you can see I was in VI while I was, it was logging calls to my server. 
So it made a mess. Uh, control G and oh, control L and VI. Interesting. Okay, I'm I'm in an SSH on the free trust machine, and I was just making a, a, a curl. Um, a curl a call to my. Um, I had to make a PHP program that um, calls the uh, calls the service because it has to be. Uh, uh, it has to be what do you call it? Um, um, a secure HTTPS connection, which my instance is not. So, secondary benefit of exposing this on the net, but I had to write a little, um, a little. Uh, PHP program um, that so now I got some more log somebody else, I guess that's, that's, that's me I, I just tried one okay I just need to do control L and it cleans up um, okay so um, this program um, uses uh, PHP curl to do a secure, uh, an HTTPS, uh, an HTTP without the S, to localhost port 5000, which uh, I'm exposing my machine on port 5000 of the this machine. And um, in order to do that, I have to have an account on this machine. So if you want to expose your node, uh, we can add an account for you, um, which will expose it. Um, then we have to, you know, I guess develop a page that accesses all the different nodes that are exposed, that people expose, gives you a menu of them. Uh, or maybe it's a radio button on the uh, on the forum as to which one you want to talk to. Uh oh, that's, that's me. I no. wanted to I wanted to see what it did. Yeah, I, I don't know what you did, but uh, it wasn't you. No, I, it was me. I clicked on the wrong thing. Oh. So, um, uh, so this this does a curl call to to the to the service, and then just simply uh, uh, gets the the output from my service, and then it echoes that server output in dividow.org which is a secure website. It's an, it can be used with HTTPS, and that enables you to use it as a Slack integration. You don't need to use HTTPS unless you need to, uh, unless you want to uh, integrate your um, Rosette instance into um, a, a Slack command, slash Rosette Jim value, whatever, but, um, uh, okay, so, um, where we were having an issue, though, um, uh, so, yeah, I also did a, a, a real quick and dirty, uh, the, uh, form, I'll show you that. You know, it's a little HTML, Gary? Yes. Okay, so you can see it's just a form that submits to port 5000. <coughs> okay, and I had to use the ID freeid.org, which is on the same machine. 
Uh, I don't know why when I do, when I put in divydata.org, it didn't access it, but it accesses the file. I have several domains that have secure certificates on this machine. Um, and any of them should work, but uh, they all point to the same machine. Um, but I haven't discovered why divydow.org calling 5000 didn't work. It hangs forever. Uh, that's for our system team to figure out, our system uh, study group <laughs> to find out. Um, and uh, so, you know, it's a very, yeah, as you can see, very primitive, simple form. And it posts directly to my service. It doesn't get a result page, which might be nice to do, to show the results side by side, along with the uh, compiled code for what you typed in, which you can do it, you know, you could, we can construct the, what, the, what is it, the, the dump, the dump command to, the rosette dump command and give it the right. program and it'll just dump out the things. Right. So, but it could in essence call this method twice, once with the, um, um, in the PHP, call it the first time with the code and then the second time with the code dump of the code and display them side by side would be nice the original code, the output, and the compiler. There, yes. Okay, so I'm going to quit the free trust machine. And oh, I did that as root, I didn't need to. I should have done it as did Dow. Um, and now I'm in my vagrant uh, directory in my on uh, the virtual machine, the Ubuntu virtual machine running on my laptop. Um, and uh, I have some stuff running, jobs. Um, I'm running rosette.python. And I'm running a uh, uh, secure shell mapping port 5000 on this machine to port 5000 on scenario.cc, which happens to be the same machine. That's my, uh, the account that I was using. Um, I probably could use any of the domains, but for some reason, the domains don't behave the same. Um, so uh, uh, in the Rose web directory, I have uh, rosette.py. Uh, which uh, uh, loads the Flask framework, uh, imports the Flask framework, which is basic set of web service tool, tools. And um, the request um, uh, uh, object from that, from the Flask archive as well. And um, it uh, imports uh, subprocess uh, check output. Okay, because uh, what I'm going to do, what I do here is, uh, well, first I set, you know, as part of the Flask framework, I set the app root, which is slash here. In other words, if they, act, if they, if they, if they have no uh, path in the URL sent to me, um, uh, execute this code that follows and I put the methods get and post so I don't care if you do a get or post execute this method 
and the method is called rosette, and the method simply returns the check output, which is the output from my system command, which runs bash. It runs a bash script that I wrote, which is uh, called uh, in, in the vagrant directory, rosette vm, rbl, rosette ROS. Uh, and then this is just saying the standard Python that you put at the end of every thing you write, which is um, uh, if the if it's running the main program, if you run this file. It runs the main program, which is uh, underscore, underscore, main, underscore, underscore, then app run. And app run is a flask command, which says run the server. And uh, let's see, I didn't, uh, I didn't, looks like I didn't set the uh, port here. The default port is 5,000, which is what I'm running on. Um, and then if we look at the RLS script, um, first thing it does is it change directory to the dir name of $0, which is how it was called. I want to get into this directory, vagrant, vm, rbl, R, uh, rosette, rosette, ros, or rosette. The dir name of this name is the directory name without the script name, ros. You don't ask any questions, Gary. That bothers me. Are you not following any of this? <laughs> I, yes, actually, I follow uh, all of what you're doing. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I look at the commands like said. I know what it. I know what these things do. Uh, but, uh, and I, I would know how to uh, reimplement this myself if I were up to a certain speed of, of uh, proficiency on Linux. Uh, which I'm okay. not, but. Now, um, uh, so the first thing this does, it, it, it echoes a new line. And this new line could be the problem. I'm sending a new line first to Rosette. And I had to do that because it was only responding every other time. And I don't know why. It was only responding every other time. Uh, I didn't figure that out. But what we're suggesting here is that uh, if I uh, uh, if I uh, uh, if I echo out first. What? <coughs> Am I in the wrong line? Yeah, I'm in the wrong line. Why doesn't this go? Uh, if I put out first the beginning parentheses, and I can, I'll do that on the line by itself for now. I guess the new line was necessary because if the new line was missing from the last command, it wouldn't work. Ah. I, don't know why the last, I don't know why the new line would be missing from the last command. And it could be, and I, I think I'm maybe getting some idea of why that is. Um, uh, because of the way I do things in the, uh, uh, in running the, uh, Okay, so I, I echo out, uh, I, 
now it's going to be a beginning parentheses, a new line, um, and then uh, um, a dollar at sign, quote, which is a trick in shell. If you, you, if you use dollar star, dollar asterisk, it enumerates all the arguments. But it doesn't protect them individually. Uh, so the only way to get them in quotes individual, you know, as they are exactly is to use the at sign instead of the star. I don't know if I needed it here, but it can't hurt. I don't think. I could try it without it and see what happens. Um, uh, so uh, all the arguments to this process, it really should only have one argument. We can check that. But if it has more than one, it'll take more than one. And it'll put them all in, preserving them uh, individually. Could be a problem. I don't know. No, that shouldn't be. Okay, so, uh, and I put this out to temp in, which looks like a file, but it's not. It's a name pipe that is being read by the running Rosette instance to get commands. So whatever command is passed as the, in the argument in the arguments to this process, um, it's going to do. And then I cheat here. I do a sleep too. I wait two seconds to make sure it's finished. Okay, uh, I figure later I can come back and I can sort of poll the output uh, to see when I get the prompt for the next command. But right now, I just sleep too. I take the easy path. It's a prototype. <laughs> okay, then uh, I have uh, this statement, this echo command uh, commented out. It's for debugging. It shows the arguments and the uh, 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 what's in the file output in this directory. Um, and then I, um, I said the output file uh, looking for the rosette prompt followed by any number of blanks and a doll and the end of the line a line beginning with rosette greater than sign any number of blanks and then a new line so i look for the prompt on a line by itself now i actually modified the compiler to put a new line at the end of the prompt and compiled it with a new line after the prompt to make it easy for myself so it's a slightly modified rosette uh, implementation. Um, and then, so the, uh, so the set command is like cat. It just cats everything, but it executes commands on it. So the out, I output the output file, which is where the output from rosette is going. And then, uh, and if a line has the prompt on it, I delete that line because I didn't want to show it in the output. Um, and then I empty the uh, output file by setting it, by opening it for output create. Uh, so that um, the next time I won't get the, the result from this command in the output. Uh, I understand this has some concurrency issues. <laughs> Two people enter a command at the same time. Sort of like in Slack, you have to watch if somebody else is typing um, if you want to be sure you're not going to conflict with them. Uh, and you should serialize commands anyway 
Otherwise, the state of the of the processor can get confused. Um, uh, in any case, the command was executed. Um, okay, so we'll try. Uh, so we added the uh, the uh, beginning parentheses here. Oops. How come I'm in insert mode? Okay, and um, now we can test our processor again. Fact nine. Why did I get fact nine? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I didn't see anybody else executing commands in my log. <coughs> That's bizarre. It is. Unless I have multiple instances. The nine is right. <laughs> Do I have multiple instances running? Okay, because I you know, I did, you know, did you define factorial routine? No, not today. I mean, no, I didn't. Did, yeah, did. I did. I did, and it didn't seem to work. Um, and I, you know, I didn't get around to trying it again, so it was still hanging out somewhere. Um, so, um, uh, so process status uh, dash F is should be friendly <laughs> dash F, which uh, will show the complete command and the user IDs. It looks like everything's running. I got I'm um, root. I'm a bad boy, but you know this is a vagrant. This isn't a real machine. Right. Um, okay, so um, it looks like I have three makes running. How did that happen? Make is the command that runs Rosette. Right. So you never know uh, which one of those levels you may be getting output from. Right, but I killed these before. I don't know what happened. Somewhere in the code, it's it's getting confused and starting up too many makes. Looks like kill. Twenty four six thirteen. Uh, 20, 24, 613. Um, you, you type 23. 24, 613 and kill 25, 344. So that must be what happened. We must have just happened to get the machine again where I defined the factorial. And now factorial is defined in that VM. <laughs> it didn't work because I didn't get the same VM. I don't know how this <laughs> happened. I killed these before. And now they came back. 25. 344. So we got one make terminated. It says all. Oh, it's a make all, I guess. Um, so we'll do another process status now. And we still have two makes. 
The one is dying. It says no such process for both yeah. of them. So they both died now. So you've only got one make running now. It's still, okay, so we got a zombie. One's a zombie, so it shouldn't hurt us. This is called a, a uh, it's not running, but it's still listed in the, in the thing, and it, it shouldn't hurt us. It's just listed in the process status, but it's not really there. And I forget how to get rid of zombies. What about 23 to 60? Is that the one you want to leave running? Yeah, uh, yeah, the most recent one I'm leaving running. And uh, I, I didn't get the start times on them. Probably if I did an L, I would get the start time. Nope. But I'm sure there's an option for getting the exact start time. Well, you can tell by process number. And I don't know why I killed the earlier, I, uh, I don't know why I killed the uh, earliest ones and rather than the later ones. I probably should have killed the later ones. May I try to run oh, one? Look at that. What? Look what you see what I got when I ran it now? No, wait, let me look. I'm on the, I'm not on the screen. Hold on. Oh. So uh, this one had never been used. <laughs> the one I killed the ones uh, that had been used before. So the, the most recent one wasn't used at all. I see. I don't know about the other one, but uh, of the three. Um, but I, I don't see the, this is the, all, all the stuff from the, the engine initially starting. And uh, now I get the nine first, then the reset. <laughs> Which actually you would expect. But why didn't it take out the rosette is the question. Well, that's an annoyance, but I'm not too worried about it at the moment. Um, the only thing I might do is, uh, I might try it without, well, actually, let me look into the other problem. Um, okay, I have a make, I added a make BG co command, which make, which runs the rosette background. And, uh, while true do, uh, it'll restart rosette. And then, while true, it'll do, uh, if there's a line of input in the name pipe, temp slash in, then echo line one, uh, echo, echo the line, output the line. 
else sleep one and the myth done so it until in so it, until it gets a line of input it's going to sleep and keep polling to see if there's a line of input and then uh, uh, when there's no more uh, and um, uh, it does that forever and it pipes then the output the lines that were entered out to the file output it does this forever except if the make crashes if make crashes it goes to the outer loop and it starts the process all over again. Huh. So how it could start more than one is beyond me. Unless somebody not thinking like myself typed the make BG command. It, it. Say that last statement again. If somebody like me went to the directory and typed make GB, that would make another one of these. That's the only way I can see them getting cloned, is if somebody actually typed make BG. Oh yeah, and then the, at the end, the last thing is the ampersand, which runs a background. So, um, because it's a procedure, uh, it doesn't show up in my jobs running. But in the process status, I see it. Uh, in other words, it's not something I started from the shell, which is a job. Um, but what's running is my web is my rosette.py which is the web service used for the Slack integration and the pipe, um, the uh, tunnel to the free trust machine. Um, okay, so did I, um, I wanted to, uh, I still have no idea why it would start another one. But um, why don't we experiment with this one and we'll take out um, the parentheses and uh, the new line temporarily. We'll confirm that we only have one running. We have two, three running again. Oh my gosh. So, so it's starting up too many at the very beginning. Well, the one running is our zombie from before. Oh. First one. That's not really running. Well, we start. We did start up two somehow. Well, the first time through. Let me think about that. We're eleven process behind. I don't understand. This is yes. No, this was started yesterday. Still. How could it start yesterday? S time is start time. Did I start another one? I, did. I didn't start another one. Did I start one when I tried it? 
Well, the, the only way that I can know to start it is to type make BG, and I did not type make BG. I just looked at the file. Oh. Why would it start another one? I mean, are there ghosts in this machine? And if the, if the new one doesn't run any code, does it matter? In other words, when I killed the other ones, this one started up. Maybe there's a fork in Rosette itself of some kind that makes another process. Every when it, you know. In other words, when we started up this guy. Is that make is that file where the well, while loops were what yeah. is that what is that thing doing when you kill a process? What does it what does it see when you kill a process what kill one of those makes? Um, good point. Good point. Thank you. Collaborative programming works. <laughs> yeah, and, and it really does. And I absolutely know nothing. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, you know, uh, I mean, years ago, when I was, you know, doing this shit every day, um, I'm sure I would have seen that immediately. Um, but today, I'm going to have to look back at the, uh, uh, at the trap command. I'm going to Linux, Linux die. <laughs> uh, you know, this is the best way to go. Uh, trap commands signal. Okay, so uh, that command signal. Uh, signals. Actually, I'm going to seek to um, sync hub. By default, exits a shield shell. Okay, so the, the sync up by default exits the shell. So I don't need to, I shouldn't need to do a trap on it. If it gets a hub single. But the make is getting the sync up, not the shell. Interactive shell will send sig hub to all jobs. 
running or stopped. See documentation on the zone built in if you want to disable this default behavior for a particular process. Use the hop on exit option for killing all jobs receiving a sick hop signal using the chopped built in. Well, I learned Unix in 75. And they didn't have any of that. <laughs> I mean, they, they, they had uh, the shell, they had uh, uh, the trap, they had the signals, but they didn't have this other stuff. Um, okay, so what? Sig term. Sig fill, sig cup, hang up. So, uh, kill, uh, 15 is what we get. So I, I do need to trap on a 15. <sighs> <coughs> Never mind. It's not a sick hop, it's a sick kill. I'm killing it. Duh. So, um, open trap. Kill. <coughs> Command comes first, right? I don't know. I was just looking at it. <coughs> Trap. Commands first, then signals. I should have known that because whenever there's, you can have multiple things in a command, the, that always comes last, usually. And especially when the first one is optional. Okay, I'm going to do an exit trap. I'm going to exit the script when I get a kill signal. Now, the uh, Uh, Okay, so now I have two zombies, apparently. No such process, the zombie. 
Now, the zombies stick around because their parents love this one, so I'm going to kill this one, too. I can just do a kill. That's a way to do it, is kill all make. <laughs> that would have solved a lot of problems. Now, I actually have to uh, go to that directory because I did. It doesn't do a change directory for me. And I have to do a dot slash make the G. And I always get that warning. So the error output is coming to the screen, which is where I get the, uh, <coughs> the log also on the screen from the uh, web service. But uh, I actually haven't seen any other errors come out of uh, Rosette. Uh, we might want to redirect those errors to the uh, uh, to be uh, Slack channel. The Slack channel, but I'm sort of watching to see if I ever get one. Right. <laughs> and I don't want to lose it <laughs> accidentally. <laughs> Um, all right, so uh, we should be running now. And it started up. And uh, Ah, what have I got here? Let's see. Um, and I got one make running. Excellent. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I got a nine here at the end. <laughs> I'm not seeing that top of that screen. I don't know why. There you go. Okay. Yeah. So the first, you know, the first time we get all this output from Rosette, from the make. And we get the answer to our statement. And we run it again. And we get nothing. Okay, and that's because I took out the new line. We run it again. Starts up again, and I don't get the answer. Somebody else playing with it? No, I'm I'm not. I've got a window open, but I'm not doing anything with it. I better close it because. Um... Okay, now it worked this time. I got the nine. So. Okay, I got the nine again. Now, the thing is that we were losing it if I didn't put the new line in there. And sometimes it needed a bracket for no reason. Now, it seems to be running consistently now. How many makes do you have running? Uh, 
That's a good question. We wanted to see if it forked it when it started up, but it seemed to start up twice, right? Yeah. Really did. Two makes. <laughs> Okay, we started one, and then two minutes later, another one started. Weird. Do we, have, do we have to do something special on the first make that that we don't do on the others? I mean, that I mean, obviously, we only I mean, want one. But the question is, if I kill the first make, will it still make another one? Oh, yeah. Okay, in other words, it seems happy with two makes. Okay, it doesn't look like it's going to start more than twice. And it's, you know, it's not failing. Um, Now, uh, if I put back the new line, does anything change? Nothing changes. But if I put in the uh, the end parentheses, And I get I get the rosette prompt. I'm gonna leave that there for now. But I don't know how we could do that. <laughs> I haven't figured that out yet. Um, uh, I know. I have an idea. I mean, I may be fixing, you know, I'm, I'm, I'll be patching a problem rather than finding out what's causing it, though. But I could make the prompt be new line, rosette, and then a new line at the end. And that way, I'm sure that Rosette would come out on a line by itself. Ah, yes. Oh, but how do I view the source? Rosette is on a line by itself, but because it's not HTML, because it's in an HTML file, it's not shown on a line by itself.
What is this? SA password protect entry checker? Weird. I have no clue what that is. <laughs> it's some browser plugin I have. It's So I got Chrome extension here is getting an error. Oh well. Okay, so the rosette is online by itself. And yet, for some reason, um, This said command is not removing the line with Rosetta on it. So I'm going to uncomment this out and I'm going to put quotes around this and that's to protect it and make sure I get it verbatim And I s let's look at this. So I have Rosetta aligned by itself twice. Uh, Was that first? So for one, some reason, it I have two rows that prompts in there, and we can't really see this too well, but uh, uh, I can't. Copy and paste it. And up. where's the view source? Uh, So it has a rosette line before and a rosette line after in the output. Our output, the output file contains 
these three lines, Rosette, 39, and Rosette. And I'm removing one of the rosettes in my set command. But it's not removing the other one. Could it be? What could it be? Well, I spent way too much time on this already. <laughs> All right, I think it, we may need to sleep on it. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave, leave sleeping dogs lied here. I'll take out my debugging statement. And um, it should be time to start the uh, op the uh, open ID effort. <laughs> if, uh, I may need to take a little break before I get into it. Yeah, I'm going to have to take a break. I'm not sure. I'll try to make it to the 2 o'clock, but uh, I thought I had another meeting today, but I'm, I can't find it. So maybe I will be at the 2 o'clock. All right. Uh, All right. I guess I'll post the video. Excellent. See what we did. Yeah, somebody will figure out what we're doing wrong. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> Maybe we should offer a bounty. Okay. Let people will watch the video at least. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm definitely going to offer a bounty. Okay. Cool. Well, good meeting, Jim. I've got to run. All right, guy. You take care. You too. All right. Bye-bye.